to you by Why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of- Hey, Neil. Hey, man. Wake up, man. We gotta talk gravity, man. Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an ass- This is interesting about Foucault pendulums. When you walk into an observatory like the Griffith Observatory and other ones, you're presented with this Foucault pendulum, which we've covered before. President Kennedy shot today just as his motorcade left downtown Dallas. Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. In Dallas... It takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee. That's why Nescafe has come up with a new kind of coffee. It's more than an instant. It's new Minute Brew Nescafe. Anybody can make a coffee more instant, but Nescafe makes it more coffee. A new kind of coffee. Minute Brew. Minute Brew Nescafe is a new discovery, a new way to hold in extra rich flavor. So please help us. Let it brew in the cup a few seconds longer for all that extra flavor to come out. In other words, with Minute Brew Nescafe, it takes a little longer, but you get a lot more coffee. If you agree it takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee, Buy this completely new kind of coffee today. New Minute Brew Nescafe. It's more than an instant, yet costs no more. New Minute Brew Nescafe. We'll continue with As the World Turns, following station identification. And now... It's supposed to be, quote, an experiment, but it's really a demonstration, a presentation that presents a phenomenon with an explanation that is theoretical. And there's some evidence to support the hypothesis. That's why it's theoretical, but it's not a law. There are also anomalies. In particular, there is an anomaly known in one way, as the Foucault pendulum anomaly, <laughs> which is something that occurs on a regular basis and it falsifies or disproves the hypothesis of gravity, at minimum keeping it a theorem and not a law, although I think it should go further to the point of disproving, rewriting the theorem of gravity. So, the Foucault pendulum was invented by French physicist Léron Foucault in 1851, along with existence, invented in the 1850s, to demonstrate the rotation of the Earth. Well, no, it's not to demonstrate that. It's an effect. It's an effect. When you have a pendulum, free-swinging pendulum, it tends to process around instead of just swinging back and forth. When you allow it to turn 360 degrees, it happens to tend to turn in the rotational direction of clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, which is a phenomena that occurs to some extent with some repeatability with a somewhat interesting correlation to latitude that has reportedly an error deviation of 1.4%, although I think it's much higher because a lot of times they can't even get it to work. But the phenomenon is used as the poster child of the heliocentric model when really it's just an effect and there's an anomaly on a, whenever there's an eclipse. And I think with lunar eclipses too, but I know definitely solar eclipses, it doesn't act the way it should. And that doesn't get explained by their theory that it has to do with the rotation of the Earth. And if they're saying that it is Due to mechanical movements of a free-spinning body, the surface that you're on, then 
if gravity is affecting it, then all gravity affects it. And it's with respect to the frame of reference of the entirety of the universe and all of the mass and gravity and gravitational forces and accelerations in the whole Earth. But it doesn't do that, especially when there's an eclipse. It doesn't do any of that. So what does it do? Well, it, it does the job of being used to present the heliocentric model and nothing more. And to make sure that they don't look bad, they don't leave anything up to chance, and they cheat it with these Hall sensors and these <laughs> sneaky little tactics. And then when you look at the Foucault pendulums, you're looking at a presentation, maybe a demonstration in a university, but they're not going to talk about the Allais effect, which since 1954 and uh, even before, I mean, when Foucault was doing it, anybody who did it, uh, during an eclipse would have seen this. It's very repeatable. It's very reproducible. It's not an anomaly. It's a fact. It's part of the evidence. It's not something that gets tossed aside when you want to because they feel like it. Well, they do it anyway. And they use the explanation for the cause as that, which is a hypothesis in itself, which has been disproven as well. Of course, the concept that the Earth revolves around the sun and spins on its axis was nothing new or radical at the time. However, it should have been. And here's why. In 1954, Nobel laureate Maurice Allais had an interest in this and discovered that there is an alternative approach to gravity philosophically, but experimentally he found what is known as the Allais anomaly now. Same thing as the Foucault pendulum anomaly, and that is simply this. The predicted movements of the Foucault pendulum did not occur during an eclipse. Well, wait, what do you mean? What difference does it make when there's an eclipse? Doesn't the Earth still spin on its axis, or it is axis? It does it spin like a top that leans against a lean all the way as it revolves around the sun. It rotates with that same gangsta lean that is perfectly pegged at a specific angle all the way throughout the flat fried egg disk of the flat solar system. Around and around, revolving around the sun with that gangsta lean that same direction with respect to what frame of reference? The solar system? No. The stars, the galaxy, something like that. So what's the big deal? Well, according to the mechanics of the way the Foucault pendulum is supposed to work, it shouldn't matter if there's an eclipse, but it, it should be the same. Well, during an eclipse, it just doesn't do it. It doesn't precess. It doesn't do it the same way where it jogs over over time at the rate through the full 360 degrees according to the latitude the way it does uh, the rest of the time usually according to the experimental setup that they have which is fairly consistent just when there's an eclipse it just doesn't behave. It doesn't do it the same way. It starts getting crazy and it starts processing differently. So it's something interesting. How do they explain it? Is the Earth not rotating? What's the deal? What causes it? Does gravity change? Does the weight of the planets and the distance and the momentum and the angular cha acceleration change? By the way, the angular acceleration is a huge problem for the whole theorem anyway, but... <laughs> you of all people should know, there's plenty wrong with me. Well, put that aside for now. What about these observed effects? How do they explain it? Well, I'll give you a hint. Here's a little hint. They don't. They don't. Well, well, what about Marie Soleil? Well, he's not one of them anymore. What, 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 what do you mean? He's a Nobel laureate. He's absolutely one of them. Well, at one point, in some ways he is, but with this, because he noticed this, he's not. It's not that he had a stake in the matter or whatever. It's just he was doing experiments and he noticed an anomaly and it was repeatable and reproducible and then it's no longer an anomaly. It's just a fact. It falsifies the gravitational theorem as it stands. And 
and is that it? Well, he also subscribed to the theory, theory, the idea, the hypothesis of a luminiferous ether, which goes against Einstein. Uh oh, because he said the observed effects are only seen when the pendulum is moving, and it must have something to do with a change in the space swept by the pendulum during an eclipse, which would be not a gravitational effect, but a change in the ether, in the ethereal field. But Einstein's a genius, AKA the space-time continuum, but that's not really the good explanation of it. That's not, <laughs> that's their crap explanation. But he said it's not connected with the intensity, density, proximity of the weight. In other words, the gravimetry, gravi gravimetry, graviometry, I don't know, gra gravimetric features. But with the variation of the weight or the inertia, no, 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 no. It's in the space swept by the pendulum, the movement of the plane of oscillation, and it's inexplicable by the theory of gravitation. And I'll tell you what, as your underrated actual physicist here on YouTube, UAP, a.k.a. Douglas, I will tell you this, if it's inexplicable, if the anomaly means that the effect that, that it's observed repeatedly and reproducibly, repeated and reproducibly, if it's observed, then the anomaly isn't an anomaly. It's data. The theory of gravitation predicts the motion of the Foucault pendulum according to them, according to them a certain way all the time, including when there's an eclipse. It should be no different, but it is every time, every time. And that's granting them their cause and effect assignment, the claim that they make to be able to explain the motion observed most of the time, but not all the time, not during an eclipse. They Can they explain it? No, cannot explain it. Then guess what? when you use the theory of gravitation to explain the rest of it, that doesn't work either. Because if an anomaly becomes repeatable and reproducible, it's not an anomaly. Don't disparage it. It's just the way it is. And if the theory of gravitation, if what you're seeing is inexplicable by the theory of gravitation, then the theory of gravitation don't explain squat. That dog don't hunt. If it doesn't explain everything, then it explains nothing because you're reaching already. You're seeing an effect and they're making huge presumptions, literally huge presumptions about the shape of the earth, the weight of the earth, and whether or not gravitation exists and pulls and doesn't push and reaches through space and bends the space-time fabric according to Einstein. And then there has to be dark matter and dark... And Come on, guys, come on. Just, you guys, just face the facts. Face it. No, they don't. They run from it. This allay anomaly is the bane of their existence. One of many, one of many. So they disparage, discredit, and run away from it. Well, it serves them right, because what do they do? They see a swinging pendulum that turns at, at a certain rate a lot of times, and they divine from it the entire structure of the universe. They think that the entire universe is explained affecting the movement of this thing and not other variables, and they call that science. Well, there are other variables. There are tons of other variables. That's why they have to use this Hall sensor, this electromagnetic coil to give the pendulum a kick in their presentations that are at best demonstrations, definitely not experiments because they have a predetermined outcome. When you do this in physics class, whether it's in the high school, well, probably not high school, but the university level where they'd even attempt such of a thing, it has to have some kind of predetermined outcome or else. and you're not going to do it on an eclipse day because that dog don't hunt, boys. But a lot of the rest of the time, it doesn't either. That's why they don't leave it to chance and they use this Hall sensor kind of cheat that you don't know about. But the big companies that make the big 
Foucault pendulums that you see in the observatories and museums and at the United Nations and other places around the world, over the world, across the world. It's got this stuff going on. They get it tuned. It's tuned with the right electromagnetic characteristics to ensure that the pendulum processes at precisely the same rate all the time. And it's not affected by an eclipse even then. <laughs> and they try to make the Ale effect go away. They wipe it from Wikipedia for the most part. Uh, Wikipedia's definitely changed, but guess what? You can't hide from the truth. Well, what is the truth? How do you determine the truth? Well, the, the truth, real science, is observable, repeatable, reproducible. And then there's the quid bono. Who benefits from it? Who? What good is it? Has it ever been used to determine one's latitude? <laughs> no, not originally. It was backed into, you already know the latitude, it correlates to latitude, but, but they backed into that. And it doesn't correlate to latitude if there's an eclipse. Hello? The Foucault pendulum, what about it? Well, what does it show when it turns the way they want it to? Well, it shows that it is a swinging pendulum and it turns in a circle. Well, what would you expect it to do? Well, if it's based on the rotation of Earth, initially you may expect it to turn around every 24 hours. And they say, oh, well, it surely does, but only on the poles, a place you can't go, an experiment you can't do. So, again, it goes to this, well, on another planet, it would behave this way. What good is that? Who benefits from that knowledge if it's even true? Qui bono, it's not observable, it's not reproducible, it's not repeatable, it's not anything. Who, who benefits from a lot of the stuff that these professors spout off? Qui bono, mofos. <laughs> I'm paying a lot for this degree. Tell me something useful. Don't tell me about other planets. What do they say about when you do it where you live? Let's say you live at uh, 45 degrees north, on the north in the northern hemisphere. Well, it's supposed to rotate clockwise according to the function and it would take several like a little you know over a day i believe to make a full rotation but you don't really ever see that do you you see it rotate initially in a short term experiment over a few hours where it rotates clockwise but you have to remember that the sun and the moon both move clockwise around you in the flat earth model. Now, could that be pulling it clockwise? Hmm, I wonder. Well, let's see. When do the anomalies occur of the Ale effect? Well, they occur during, guess what? Eclipses. Oh, when the sun is eclipsed or occulted, the swing of the pendulum is interrupted. Listen. The thing at the mall is set up for a show. It's made by a company. A company with competitors? No. A company with a monopoly. And the company, they make the pendulum. Well, who, who in the heck's going to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to this company to make a pendulum when you can just take a heavy rock and hang it from a string and do that? Well, because that wouldn't work now, would it? So what what does the the what is it? Well, they have an electromagnetic drive set up, kicking the magnet as it crosses in order to keep it in perpetual motion. So it has to be plugged in, and there are many ways to make sure that it turns at a certain rate. You could have ratcheting. You could have um, a timer on the magnets and have it be pulled from uh, the outer ring and all that, but that's not how they do it. They just have it tuned. So the electromagnetic hall sensor, the kick feature that's set up with the coil is subject to the right-hand rule, the Lentz effect. It rotates it depending on the distance and the intensity of the electromagnetic signal and the ferromagnetic qualities or properties of the bob swinging of the pendulum, which is 
hello, it's almost always some kind of ferromagnetic metal that there's a reason for it. And they just set the distance and it gets tuned to the known latitude. When you buy these things, they want to know where it's going to be and it stays in that spot at that latitude. They don't move these things around and have them determine the latitude. It's, it doesn't, it, it could work that way, but not with it being plugged in. It's, it's set up as a presentation at that point. You know, maybe they change it up. I'm not going to say that they fake it one way or another, but they do guarantee that it turns the way they want it to. Period. That's it. End of story. It's not an experiment. It's for show. A uh, Foucault pendulum is a pendulum with a specially designed pivot designed so that it can swing back and forth in any direction. Now as you go to lower latitudes away from the North Pole, the time that it takes the pendulum, the plane of the pendulum to rotate around lengthens. And in fact at the equator the plane doesn't rotate at all. At the latitude of Hanover it takes 35 hours for the plane to rotate. So if you look at this pendulum here, if we look at it a few minutes from now, we won't even be able to detect that the plane of the pendulum swing has changed. You see, plane of the pendulum swing is also affected, for example, by the revolution of the Earth around the Sun. At the equator, the plane doesn't rotate at all. And so, for example, if you have a, a Foucault pendulum at the North Pole of the Earth, it takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee. That's why Nescafe has come up with a new kind of coffee. It's more than an instant. It's new Minute Brew Nescafe. Anybody can make a coffee more instant, but Nescafe makes it more coffee. A new you will kind rotate of rotate around every day because the Earth is rotating, but you will also get a much longer rotation over the period of a year uh, from the revolution of the Earth around the Sun. So if you think about it, this Foucault pendulum here is a kind of rotation meter. It's a way of measuring rotations. A suitably placed, uh, a suitably placed Foucault pendulum can be used to detect the rotation of the Earth or the rotation of the revolution of the Earth around the Sun. Or in principle, you could use a suitably oriented Foucault, Foucault pendulum to measure the rotation, for example, of the of the solar system around the galaxy. By the power of Grayskull. The Foucault pendulum is sensitive to rotation, but rotation around what? speculation in physics and philosophy about that question. Ernst Mach, a 19th century and 20th century physicist, put forward the conjecture that the Foucault pendulum is measuring rotation relative to the universe as a whole. By the power of Grayskull! Kind of interesting connection between a local physics experiment here in this room and the universe as a whole. The problem that people bring up is how can this pendulum here somehow know something about the entire universe? So it remains as an unproven conjecture, more in the realm of philosophy than in physics. It's cheated. A lot of people think, oh, it's just free swinging. No, it's not. Here's the excuse. Air resistance damps the oscillation. So some Foucault pendulums in museums incorporate an electromagnetic or other device to keep the bob swinging. Others are restarted regularly, sometimes with a launching ceremony as an added attraction, distraction, detraction. <laughs> Besides air resistance, the use of a heavy symmetrical bob to reduce friction forces, mainly air resistance, air resistance by a symmetrical and aerodynamic bob. The other main engineering problem in creating a one meter Foucault pendulum nowadays is said to be ensuring there is no preferred direction of swing. 
well, it's supposed to swing according to the way that the Earth is spinning on its axis, on its, its axis. But when it swings to and fro, the pull is about equal, which it wouldn't be if it was a physical turn, but it's a it's an electromagnetic or rather an ethereal turn from I think Lentz's law, the right hand rule, you know, that whole chestnut of fifteen degrees per hour, but it depends how close you are type thing, which is the Goldilocks zone, it perfectly matches the the theoretical turn that you would get both by distance and if there was rotation so it works on both models of the earth's shape so well so given that both models work how do they just completely discount the model that doesn't agree with the heliocentric well this is how the deviations are explained perfectly by the theory of gravity except for the anomaly so while the deviations from the vertical as it swings are pretty much static and that goes as normal during an eclipse, it's the rotational, the torsional change that is a din dynamic phenomenon. And the reason behind the Foucault pendulum anomaly is unknown because they never investigated it. The scientific explanations include the presence of dark matter, gravitational anomalies, etc., etc., made up bullcrap. Many orthodox scientists have just simply dismissed the Elias effect as likely being due to poor experimental setup. Well, we can, we've come to expect that from the scientific community when it comes to anything that disagrees with the heliocentric model. It's like a child throwing a tantrum and knocking the toys over and throwing them and, and, and just smashing around and crying. Now, okay, they can do that for a year or two, but what... How long has this been going on? Since <laughs> almost a century. <laughs> They've just been dismissing it as poor experimental setup. Well, we'll look at some of these setups. Is it do they they just wrote it off saying, "Ah, it must be due to external factors such as uh, changes in the humidity during an eclipse or or the sunlight and temperature changes during an eclipse." Blah, blah, blah. And and they just wrote it off. Well, has anybody ever done experiments to account for those? Yes, they have. Many times. Still, they're written off as tainted fringe science. And as soon as it was associated with anything to do with a different geographical model of the shape of the Earth, well, then it was really written off. Written off. Lit off. It lit them off and it, they wrote it off as... Just an it's just an enigma, and they shrug, and they're done with it. Well, one experiment was done underground in a disused salt mine June the 1st, 2011, and the same anomaly was observed. It's always observed. They can't explain it. That's not even that much. The ether is not even that much different from the so-called space-time continuum, which is I disagree with completely, but at least it's a closer model. If you look at it that way, the so-called fabric of space, the spandex trampoline that the bowling balls are on and all that nonsense. It's not balls flying around, but at least if you think of it as that kind of fabric of space and a warping of it, then you're getting closer to the truth because they're dumb. They're dumb. They're so far from the truth and they refuse to step towards it. As soon as they see it, they run away from it, especially if it's associated with anything to do with a different different anything from the heliocentric model. They just cry, they knock the toys over, they wreck everything, and they run away. They just do that, and that's it. So it's not mature. It's not mature at all. But the data is there. It's repeatable. It's reproducible. Well, really, it's... Well, it's repeatable from eclipse to eclipse, but really all you can do with an experiment like this is reproduce it multiple, multiple, multiple times throughout various eclipses. But you're approaching repeatability at that point the best you can. Well, it's it's absolutely as, as valid, if not more valid, than the so-called repeatability of the normal function of the Foucault pendulum, 
when that requires the assistance of a little electronic device that gives it a quote kick that's made by one company when all these big Foucault pendulums out there are made by one company that give and they have this device oh well so you don't have because the air resistance and it's dangerous if you want to kind of release it and things can go wrong because it does it have it messes up a lot of the time and they can't get it to process the way that they want and so they just just like with everything else just like when they fake space they just say well it's all real but we're going to fake it just so that we take the risk out of it so we're not risking looking bad we're when the kids go into the planetarium or the or the science museum in Paris or wherever they go and they see the Foucault pendulum hypnotically swinging like a stopwatch before their eyes and they believe hard into science and the religion and faith that goes with it. As they do that, it does not fail them and it shows, it demonstrates through a air quote experiment, the air quote law of gravity, which is a disproven hypothesis actually but still it's been over a century and or, or close to a century they wrote it they wrote it off saying one time they said uh Elias is not an experimental scientist well he has a nobel prize i think at least one and that's their own club like he's the king of their own club and they and they betrayed him because something he did or something he discovered, while true, goes against the narrative of the heliocentric model and they just go into a toddler tantrum over it, sadly. So, well, what do they do to prove how true they are? Well, they do those fake satellite launches and all kinds of other stuff that they also fake just like the Foucault pendulum you know it's it's somewhat faked I mean it's just like everything else it's some of it's real there is an effect it does function this way but when there are anomalies and when they end up having to fake it to sh to have it not mess up when they demonstrate it so they don't look bad so then they just say well we know it's real from the times we did it for real have you done it for real no well, maybe if you did, it would it would turn out that way, but maybe it wouldn't, like during an eclipse. Well, what does it mean? We don't want to think about it. Well, but you could find something out about the universe. No, that would be science. That's not what we're doing here. It's indoctrination. This is all about getting your kids, you as a kid, all of you, everybody, to believe this, to believe in the heliocentric model at all costs. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Shut up, sit down, believe, believe in it. That's their response. We don't want to think about it. It's bad, bad pseudoscience. It's go home and kick and scream. And that's it. Earth spins on its axis. It leans against her lean and it goes around. We know this. And the Foucault pendulum. Well, can you do it? Put it on the North Pole. What about how does the moon affect it and the sun? Does it... Uh, what about other planets proximity uh, we don't know well we know but we don't need to show you that we don't need to show you that can you go that can I, can i go to the south pole no well we could but you'd be escorted like we'd take you and tell you where you are and we would do it for you and you could watch it on a screen or something <laughs> oh sorry guys you know what screw you all we know that you're just it's it's not real science. I mean, if you just look at the face of it, the way they dismiss things, that's not real science. It's an anomaly. It's it's not an anomaly. It's it's an anomaly maybe the first few times, but since the 1950s and way back, they've been doing it. It's every single time. You can do it in a salt mine. What's it about the air and humidity then? It's nothing. You guys, you're reaching. They just try to disparage a life just then you have to disparage everybody who finds the same result and it's thousands of people now what are you going to do why don't you do the experiment they refuse to do it so they call it fringe science associated with the pseudoscience of a alternative view of the ge geography shape of the earth well okay 
I think you're you're pseudoscience. <laughs> All right, you're not actual. We're actual. You're not actual. You're pseudo. All right, that's all. Go, uh, I'll go listen to Phil Collins' song, S -s -s -studio. S -s -s pseudo, pseudo science. Anyway, take care. Oh, it remains as an unproven conjecture, more in the realm of philosophy than in physics at this point. So why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of.